All right, we are looking at Germanicus, an eminently pious man devoured by the beasts at Smyrna in Asia Minor for the testimony of Jesus Christ, A.D. 170. In P.J. Twisk's Chronicle is found the following account for the year, A.D. 170. Germanicus, with other dear friends of God, had to suffer severe persecution and torture for the name of Christ and was finally cast before the wild beasts and thus willingly ended his life. Now, let me stop. It says... He did all this for the name of Christ. He suffered torture, persecution for the name of Christ. We can endure some laughing and mocking for the name of Christ. Even if it comes from family. Even if it comes from family. What we read about here in this Martyr's Minute is people that that were witnesses. We can be a witness too. That's what martyr means is witness. We can be a witness as well for Jesus Christ. But thank God we don't have to worry about losing our life. To stand for the Lord. These people did. And I mean, this is why we call, you know, Baptist history, the the trail that we come from, the trail of blood, because blood followed the Baptists because they were persecuted by started off the Roman government. Various governments throughout history have persecuted them still are today. But it went from there really to the Roman Catholic Church. And then you have the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s which, you know, they just celebrated the 400th anniversary of of Reformation Day, they call it, with Martin Luther in 1517, putting his 95 theses on the the door of the church at Wittenberg um, 400 years ago, and they celebrate that. But let me just say, those Protestants that saw some evils in the Catholic Church and did preach against some, and rightly so, they went and did the same thing because they're still Catholic in doctrine. And they killed Baptists just the same. Baptists are not Protestants. And if someone's telling you that, they haven't honestly done their study. They haven't honestly looked at history. And they're either deceived themselves or they're purposely lying to you. Baptists are not Protestants. So this trail of blood is what we're looking at right here. So he suffered persecution and torture for the name of Christ. Concerning the cause of his conversion, suffering, and death, other authors write thus. When the bystanders... While the Christians were being miserably put to death, beheld with their eyes that the flesh of the martyrs of Christ by many scourgings and stripes, so them whipping them, beating them, okay, was lacerated and torn loose even to the inmost veins and deepest sinews so that their entrails and the most secret parts could be seen moving. Think about that. These people suffered for Christ and were beaten so severely that their flesh was ripped up so much you could see their veins, the sinews, the joints, where the, the muscles connect to the bones. You could see all of that. The, their entrails, their guts were exposed so they could see them moving. This is what they went through for the name of Christ. For the name of Christ. And that the torturers then strewed potsherds, just broken pieces of pots, seashells, and even caltrops. A caltrop. I meant to show you guys one. Let me see. Do we have easy access to a stapler? Can someone go grab me a stapler or just pull me a little piece of staples out? Can someone do that? Can we run to a class and grab that for me, please? See if Miss Virginia has a stapler or if not in the other building. And I'm going to show you what a caltrop is. So they would strew or just throw these pot shirts, seashells, and even caltrips on the ground, over which they rolled, dragged, and on which they pressed the Christians, thus tormented with their naked bodies, and that at last, when they on account of the previous torments could scarcely live or draw breath any longer, they cast them before the wild beasts to be devoured by them. I say, when the spectators of these tragedies saw how inhumanely these people were treated, and on the other hand, how patiently the suffering Christians endured the tortures, they were greatly amazed, yea, terrified. So what they do is they throw this broken glass. They throw, um, what else did it say? The cow trips and then seashells. Broken seashells is what they do. They throw it on the ground and then they basically crush them and they roll them in it after they've beaten their bodies in this manner. That's what they do. I'm going to show you what a cow truck is. You probably made these in school if you were young boy. All right, but these would be bigger than what it is right here. Thank you, Isaiah. Uh, 
okay, that's what they do. And no matter how you throw it, I'm not going to throw it on the carpet because I don't want to lose it, but no matter how you throw it, it lands with a spike sticking up. doesn't matter how you throw it. So what you don't do is throw it on your teacher's chair. Okay, that is what you don't do. Okay? I'm not teaching anything. I'm telling you what not to do. Okay? Don't throw it on your... If you get in trouble for this, you cannot blame me. I'm, parents, don't blame me. I'm telling you, kids, do not do this. Most of you are homeschooled, so if you do it, it's your mom. Man, don't do it, okay? All right. But my point being, I wanted you to show you, I wanted to show you that so you could see what it was. They'd be bigger and obviously stronger, you know, pieces of metal, um, but they would throw them out there and they'd roll these people on it. After they've been all cut up and torn up and everything else, and this would get all over their body. And then when they were done with that, then they'd throw them in the amphitheater. And here's the entertainment for the masses. You know, you might have heard the statement with Rome, bread and circuses, bread and circus. What was that? That was welfare and entertainment. No, yes, that's exactly what that statement means. And that was the demise of the Roman Empire, by the way. And we're going down the same course. We want bread and circuses. What is it? Feed us and entertain us. And if that's not America, I don't know what is. We want our entertainment. We've got to have it. And sometimes those gods clash with each other. We won't get into all that, though. I've done it before. But we won't get into all that right now. But this is what they do. This is how they would treat them. And then to entertain all the people, they'd throw them in the amphitheater, the arena, and they'd let the beasts loose on them. Many times what they do is they'd starve those beasts so that as soon as they went, they'd go just tear into them. Could you imagine being mauled to death? Having a lion just chew you up. That's what would happen. You ever watch those wilderness shows? I mean, when the lions chase the gazelles or whatever. I mean, they go for the neck and they'll bite their neck and incapacitate them. And it usually they'll stay there till they suffocate him, but not always. Sometimes they're just there. And, you know, while that one's holding the neck and it's still breathing, the others start ripping into the guts. And you'd be eaten alive for a time. This is what they would do to humans that believe the Bible like we do. Amen. Just for believing what we do. For believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead and that he was God. And for other things, baptism being one of them. Mostly because of baptism. The right baptism. But this is what happened. This is what they did to them. And people would watch this. This was their entertainment. Among these was the aforementioned Germanicus, who being strengthened through the grace of God, so powerfully overcame the natural and innate weaknesses, weakness of the mind, with so much dreads, which so much dreads the bodily death that on account of his singular steadfastness, he could well be considered one of the most eminent martyrs. For when the stat holder, the governor, lieutenant governor, sought to persuade him and to move him, um, and to move him by soft words to spare the bloom of his youth and have mercy upon himself, he despised his counsel and for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ did not count his youthful life precious. After that, it is stated, by the ancient writers, how the wild beasts were let out to him and how greatly he desired to be devoured by them, that he might be delivered from this body of sin and death, so that both Jews and heathen who stood by were exceedingly astonished at him. Thus, this pious witness of the Son of God departed this life with an, immo an immovable heart and became united with Christ, his blood bridegroom and Savior. And that is the end of Germanicus and how he was martyred for the Lord. Because he believed like we do. Think about that. In his youth, I would say he was probably under 20. Could have been a little older, but they called him a youth. He was probably under 20 years old. With those of you under 20 years old, could you live for God? I'm not asking you to die for God. Could you live for God? Can you live for Him? Those of you over 20, can you live for Him? Can you live for Him? You don't have to die for him, live for him. Be a witness, be a martyr. Be a witness. Be a witness.